Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. So, um, back the comeback. <laughs> what is this stupid? Back the our comeback will be bigger than our. Yeah, it's all done. <laughs> so, I've been predicting the the death of the comic book industry, the end of the comic book industry for three years, and it's it, it's here. It's here. Um, so now the question becomes what to do after. Uh, so just to reiter reiterate for people purposefully trying to misconstrue me, the death of the comic book industry does not mean no comic books exist anywhere and the medium is done forever and the genre of superheroes is gone from the face of the earth. It just means the old way, the direct market, the weekly comic book grind, as it was, that's, that's gone. That's broken. It's not coming back in any sort of form uh, that it used to be in. There will still be things called comic book shops, which will mostly sell not comic books. There will still be something coming out weekly in some sort of form. But the old, you know, you go there and there's several rows and there's dozens of comics every uh, week. Yeah, that's uh, that's broken. That's That's gone forever. So, the question becomes, what do you do after the autopsy? You know, besides bury something. I remember when I was a kid, we went to uh, Chicago one summer. I think it was 89, 88. Anyway, there was some insane heat wave. And, you know, the radio all was talking about all the people who had died of the heat. And I, I don't know if I was a particularly cynical kid, but after hearing the same you know, news, you know, story on the fourth different station for the 10th time, I said, are people really dying of the heat? Or do people just not want to conduct autopsies when it's 112 degrees? Out? <laughs> um, but uh, uh, anyway, so um, one of the things I, I keep coming back to is weirdly enough, something that's kind of been a uh, you know, you know, something I've liked, but also had some issues with, which is uh, cartoonist kayfabe. Uh, so they've done some, you know, the, the usual channels I listen to, you know, honestly got kind of boring or repetitive or spammy. So I start listening to other, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm watching channels where you ever see the channels where people just take an old like trowel from a garden and they just spend like three days making it shiny again. You know, like this is an amazing use of everyone's time. Um, but, uh, so, you know, uh, I, I watched the ones that I passed over the first five times, you know, they were recommended to me. Um, and they had some that I thought were really boring and I just didn't get it. I'm like, well, you know, sometimes you have an idea and then you start recording the video. You're like, oh gosh, this is so boring. Um, but it's, they did one video and it was on photo reference books. One of them had got to, gone to Japan and uh, gotten some uh, photo reference. And what is photo reference? Well, it's exactly what it thinks of. It, it sounds like. It's an entire book of people walking and looking to the right, walking and looking to the left, pretending to jump, pretending to land. Um, and I was like, I kind of get it. Like, why are you doing the whole thing? Well, these are basic, basic things that any artist should have or know about. And that's all just been broken. It's uh, the continuity of, of uh, you know, master and apprentice, uh, you, know, uh, you know, being, a, you know, an artist assistant. That's all been broken and gone away. So there's, so we're basically, you know, uh, starting from uh, scratch. I remember I had this crazy, when I used to be stationed at Fort Hood, um, I lived in Austin, so I had this one hour commute each way. And, uh, you know, I don't know, 10 miles outside of Fort Hood, there was this weird, all I can call it is contraption. It kind of looked like a railroad car, but it wasn't on tracks. It might have been a generator, but it wasn't near anything that would need energy. It was just this mysterious contraption. It wasn't, you know, handmade. It was obviously manufactured somewhere. So I became utterly fascinated with it. And I decided that what it was, was a machine <laughs> to restart American values after an apocalypse. You know, after an apocalypse and everyone's, you know, forgotten the old world, like it would like pop out and it would have like a pizza <laughs> or it would, it would do, it would play the Star Spangled Banner or all of a sudden an American flag would pop out of it. And it was, it was to kind of, you know, reacclimate this, you know, post-apocalyptic society and make them Americans again. I, 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 I never I never kind of knew where that story went. It was kind of a shaggy dog story, but I always thought it was kind of fun. And that's what I see like um, 
channels like Cartoonist Kayfabe, and I'm probably gonna start doing a lot more stuff, is you know, you just consult the er text. You go back to some interview with freaking Russ Heath in an issue of Comics Interview from 1985, and there is gonna be some freaking gold in them thar hills. Um, so uh, I'm really excited about this aspect of of going into some really oldie Olsen type of stuff and just how do you clean brushes? <laughs> how do you use a T-square? You know, well, you know what what makes a good establishing shot? You know, how to transition from scenes and and that's stuff to me is really great. Now, again, probably the my biggest issue with cartoonist kayfabe is let me not they know which side of the their bread is buttered. How does that go? I screwed, did I screw that one up? The but the butter and the bread, the thing. They're nice. They're gonna you're gonna come on their show and they're gonna say you're great and talk about all the great things you did. And I, like I said, I previously I had I had described them as when I first started watching. Like Tom Scioli was in almost every video. Now he's in none. Um, but I described them as very respectful pallbearers. You know, they were just kind of respectfully lowering. Uh, you know. Uh, the um, the comic book industry into the grave. They weren't going to say anything bad. It was going to be very respectful. And then it's just over. But now I'm almost kind of seeing it like that weird contraption that like going through these 30-year-old interviews in Amazing Heroes and Comic Scene and Comics Interview and uh, Comics Journal was always too snooty for me. Uh, but that's going to be how you really restart things. Um, it's going to be, you know, reading, you know, Will Eisner talking about you know, he discovered the best way to, uh, you know, revive an old brush that wasn't holding its point as well as it used to. Now, I'm not saying everyone's going to go back to uh, to uh, pens and brushes, but what I'm saying is there are concepts that have been lost that are going to be refound and rediscovered. And, I'm, and what? I'm actually probably just going to straight up just show the old interviews because they would, you know, demonstrate things. They would show some in-process pages and it was really helpful. What, you know, it's one thing to hear someone describe it and they go into process a bit, but I think, you know, process and craft, you know, craft specifically is really going to be, you know, where it's at. I, I kind of feel like it's sort of like a, a mutually assured destruction, like SJWs and anti... SJWs have kind of equally destroyed each other. Um, so now it's just, you know, the survivors in the uh, radioactive wasteland to kind of decide what future they want to have. So I think the history is going to be, you know, looking back at some, uh, you know, uh, good old examples of, of quality and craft and worksmanship and you know all this oldie Olsen stuff and then you're really gonna see you know you know where to go from there so I'm excited about this post a lot post apocalyptic future we all find ourselves in <laughs> through no fault of our own you know some fault of you know directly of uh, other people uh, but a lot of random happenstance as well so anyway uh thanks for watching subscribe make sure you're still subscribed Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone given to the GoFundMe, the Patreon, and the Indiegogo. You're funding original content and an original lawsuit. Links are in the description. And I will have uh, more, well, supposedly comic stores are gonna be open tomorrow. I don't know much of what they'll have. I think some Marvel, some stuff, we'll see. We will see. Anyway, thanks for watching, bye.